Hey everybody, I'm Lisa Campion. I'm an author and also been a professional psychic for over 30 years. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to avoid the dangers of paranormal investigation. What are the dangers of paranormal investigations and how to do it safely? So um, is it actually dangerous? Well, it can be, sort of depends on how you do it. Um, it's really considered when I teach psychic development, I have a few things that I really consider uh, high risk psychic activities. And this is probably at the top of the list. I mean, I know, I know the hard way because I did it for years and years back in the early 1990s. Uh, nobody was doing it. No one else was doing this. Well, probably there, people, there were people that were doing it, but I couldn't find any information about it. I, um, couldn't find books about it. There was definitely no paranormal TV back then, nothing really on the internet about how to handle this. And I had been working as a psychic for a long time. And one day, one of my friends who was a realtor called me and said, you know, I have this house I can't sell. It's, it's a gorgeous house in a beautiful town and every people walk in and they don't buy it. Um, and she's like, it feels creepy. Like, I feel like maybe I know this sounds weird, but you're a psychic. I think it has a ghost. Will you check it out? Um, I don't know. It was like it was way back in the day, nineteen ninety-two, or it was a, a long time ago when I did that, and <clears throat> and I really had no no idea what I was doing um, because nobody knew like back then. So I made every single mistake in the book. In the next ten years, I did a lot of house clearings and paranormal investigation, and I just want to help you not make the same mistakes that I did. And I think for me, the worst case scenarios were. Um, happened. And that is to have something follow me home. I did this. Wow. Um, this particular investigation didn't think it was going to be a big deal, really walked into a lot of trouble and had a spirit uh, follow me home, a, a pretty negative entity, which um, took a long time to get rid of. And in the like almost a year, and in that time, I was plagued by nightmares, had very ill health, got really, really sick. Um, freaked out my family, my poor kids were, you know, um, who were little then and were really um, impacted by this. So that's what I, I don't want that to happen to you. So let's talk for a minute about why it's dangerous. You know, we know that when I would say no one comes to my office because they're having a good day, no one's going to call you for a space clearing, a house clearing or ghost busting if their house feels all groovy. So we know or walking into a problem situation, or maybe we're doing some paranormal investigation at a sort of famous, famously haunted place or a place we know or expect that it's gonna be, we're going there because bad things happen there. Um, and places where bad things happen tend to attract all kinds of different entities. Um, and so we, we know um, we're, we're heading into deep waters. So what, what are entities? What does that mean? Entities are, these non-physical spiritual beings that don't have your best interests at heart. And they are sort of an umbrella term, like people use the word spirit guides is an umbrella term. I use the word spirit guides to describe helpful spirits that are here to help us. Entities are kind of the opposite side of things. They're spirits that are around us that don't um, have your best interests at heart. They can be harmful. They can be any, anywhere from mildly annoying, frightening to downright, like a problem, dangerous, right? So most of the time, what we encounter are the are spirits of, of deceased people, ghosts, you know, the dead people. And I always say, you know, ghosts are a bit of a mixed bag. Um, if you were an unpleasant person <laughs> in life, you might be an unpleasant person uh, in death. And that's certainly true when we go to places like, you know, prisons, mental institutions, and places where people really suffered, were really, you know, lived difficult lives filled with a lot of suffering and died difficult deaths. Um, we can encounter some pretty cranky ghosts. Um, and generally speaking, they're a mixed bag and they just really need our help. Um, we often, I don't find them terribly dangerous, although we hear, you know, stories about people who do, but I've never encountered one that I felt like was um, physically dangerous to me. Um, I think the bigger problem is these non-human entities. Most of the time they're lower astral entities. So the astral plane is sort of the dimension that's right next door to us. And there's a mixed bag over too, but the, the ones that create sort of these really dangerous hauntings are 
called lower astral entities. And we find them in, um, they're attracted to places where a lot of negative human emotion lived. And they're, they sort of, I feel they eat negative um, human emotion like food. Um, and they also exist off the life force energy that we living humans, you know, give off. So we do find them in those places, mental institutions, old prison, uh, prisons, places like that. And then sometimes our spiritual practices can bring them into closer contact with us, especially if we're sort of on the dark side there. So Ouija boards attract them. A Ouija board um, and some of the other spirit boards are like a little bit of a, of, of a direct doorway into this lower astral. And sometimes things like EVP work or ghost box types of things can draw their attention. Like, Ooh, somebody's listening over there. Like, let's, we, maybe we can get away in. Let's go there. They'll give you bad dreams, follow you home. Sometimes attached to your energy drain you. So a lot of times when they're around, people feel very fatigued, very emotional. Um, sometimes they instigate emotion in us because that's their food. They might like intentionally frighten you. And then, um, sort of that's like some, you know, nice little snack for them. Sometimes we um, encounter residual energy, which isn't just particular spirit. It's more like the energetic psychic imprint of something that happened. Um, we find that in battlefields, places where like violence happened or um, kind of catastrophic loss of life. Um, and there's nothing there that it's not a spirit there that's going to attack you or latch onto you, but it, it will make you feel quite sad, especially if you're sensitive. So if you're an empath or a sensitive, um, all of this is going to be, you know, you're going to be a little more susceptible and vulnerable to these things that we're talking about. So what do we do about it? Here is, um, here's a couple of thoughts to think of. First of all, don't do what you see on TV, the paranormal hunters, unless you've been bully trained and you really know what you're doing. So just watching, and I love those shows. Don't get me wrong. I watch them all the time. And I, I think some of them are great and really know what they're doing and really, really help people. Um, but for the most part, um, paranormal you know, work and ghost hunting is a bit boring, really. Not much happens. And that doesn't really work for TV. You know what I'm saying? So um sometimes they have to do things in order to get spirits to react. So they do things like provocation, which can be quite dangerous. That's a bit like poking the bear or kicking the hornet's nest to see if the hornets are at home. Um, even tr trigger object sessions can be, uh, you know, provo in a provocative kind of way that can get the spirits a bit riled up. And um, I feel like we have to be particularly careful in places where there's paranormal tourism that's very tricky so famously haunted places like I live in I live close to the Lizzie Borden house a famous Lizzie Borden house in, in Fall River um, Massachusetts and you know it, it's just a, there's been so many paranormal investigations there people have done EVPs trigger sessions bear board sessions and these things can actually attract other spirits and sometimes darker spirits than were originally there and I think all of those things kind of um, open the portal to the other side over and over and over again, then what happens is you get like a permanently open portal, usually to the lower astral. So, you know, one ghost hunting team can come in and clear out all the spirits that are there. Um, and then all the continued um, investigation techniques that sometimes just open the door wider and all new, even worse spirits come through. So just be mindful of that. I'm not saying don't do this. I'm just saying be careful and do it really, really, um, you know, intentionally and kindly and compassionately. So how do we do that? Here, here's how we uh, some tips for you to do it safely. Please do not go alone. Um, that's not a good idea. And that's a mistake I made a lot in my early days. I would I never go in. Uh, I don't actually do this very often anymore. Um, but I, I, if I were to, I, um, I would never go by myself. And I think what happens is people on some level don't really believe they're it's sort of titillating. It's kind of like exciting um, and thrilling. And we really, we want proof that something is bigger than, than the world that we know, or we've, maybe we've lost somebody and we just want some proof that it's real, um, that we, 
were thrilled or captivated or intrigued or hopeful that the idea that there is life beyond death or there's something beyond what we normally experience in our day-to-day -day world is real. And I, and I totally understand that and respect that. But I think because sometimes people don't believe it's real, um, they, they engage in these provocative behaviors without really understanding the risks behind it, you know? And I, I always say this is a bit like, not believing in sharks or wanting to believe, sort of believing in sharks and then chumming the water and jumping in just to see if sharks are real. Like, let's not do that, right? So if you're gonna do this, don't go alone, get some really good psychic self-defense skills first. Um, you know, learn how to protect yourself, learn, um, there's a million ways to do that, um, depending on how sensitive you are and what your religious beliefs and traditions are. We, we don't wanna go in without psychic protection. You're gonna jump into the water with the chum, be in a shark cage, okay? Um, definitely get training from so, a reputable paranormal group, which there are many, 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 many all around. And some of them are super fantastic. And most of them um, will teach you and love to have new members. And, and really they do it in a very good, smart way. So get some training from one of these amazing groups and work it together as a group. And just be cautious about, you know, mindful, like, intentional if you're going to use um, provocative provocations such as provoking methods trigger sessions evps just be thoughtful and mindful about what the consequences can be for the people that live there or will continue to visit there and i think um have a really clear intention too that you're here to help people that you're here here if there are spirits of, of people who are dead and they want to cross over and they need help to do so what can we help them um, sometimes they want to cross over. Sometimes they just want to be left in peace and we can sort of make agreements between the, the living people and the non-living people who occupy the same space that where harmony can come about. Um, don't, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't see it too much anymore in the parent TV world, but back in the early days, people would their equipment, provoke the heck out of everything and be like, yep, you definitely got a ghost. And then I'm out of here. You definitely got some kind of weird, creepy spirit and I'm leaving now and, and leave the poor, the poor family with this pissed off cranky spirit. So let's not do that. Um, let's see with compassion, dead, dead people are people too. And, um, and let's treat everybody living or dead with respect. Uh, and if somebody, you know, needs help with the non-human entities, we we're going to find ways to help them as well. So, um, and then when you're done, go back to your psychic hygiene, really clear yourself afterwards, practice extremely good psychic self-defense, clearing, grounding, cord cutting, all those things that we can do so that you don't bring things home um, unintentionally with you. So anyway, I hope that helps. And um, I hope that you can continue to investigate this topic make a difference in the world. If you feel inclined to do that, just be smart. Just be a little street smart about it and you can have an amazing time. And if you have any questions about that or you wanna know more about it, check out my website. It's lisacampion.com. I have all kinds of tips on psychic self-defense and psychic development programs for all levels. So if you feel like you wanna up your psychic skills a little bit or, or skill up your psychic self, get some spiritual Kung Fu, stop by and say hi. I've got all kinds of things for you. Thanks for being here.